Continuing where we left off from my last video, we're going to be taking a crack at a ROM hack known as Kalos Crystal. This hack of Pokemon Crystal replaces all of the Gen 2 Pokemon with the Pocket Monsters from Generation 6, and does the same for the Gen 1 Pokemon with their Gen 5 counterparts. Be sure to check out my video on Unova Red if you want to see more. For today's challenge, I figured I'd see if I could beat this game with only gift Pokemon. This game keeps all of Gen 2's mechanics, so there is no physical special split. However, Ghost moves are now all special, Dark moves are all physical, and the newly added Fairy type is special. Just to quickly go over the rules, I can only use Gift Pokemon in battle. I can catch other Pokemon to use HMs if needed. I can't use items in battle except held items, and I won't be using any glitches or exploits. Also remember to like, subscribe and click the bronze on if you want to see more content from me in the future. I would love it if we could reach 5000 subscribers by the end of the year. Now with all of that out of the way, let's go! Now most people who have played through Johto will tell you that the grass type starter is the least optimal for a Johto playthrough, since it doesn't have that many good type matchups against the gyms and the Elite Four. However, I decided to go with Chespin anyway, since not only is it my favourite Kalos starter, but unlike Meganium, it actually gains a secondary typing for its final evolution, which will come in handy. I name my little chestnut, Fortescue. See if you can guess the naming scheme for this team. I gotta say, I love seeing all of these later generation Pokemon in the Gen 2 art style. Gen 2 is my favourite generation aesthetically, so this is a real treat for my eyes. Now the very first wild encounter I got was a shiny Purloin. I died a little bit inside though, as you don't have any Pokeballs at this point in the game, and so I had to kill it. Oh yeah, we also won the first rival battle without any major difficulty, as per usual. Now you would think that a grass type starter would have a hard time in a flying gym, but Faulkner only seemed to want to use weak normal moves against us. We also had Rollout by this point, which is super effective and doubles in power every turn, so we rolled right over him. After that, we pick up the egg from the aid in the nearby Pokemon Center. What do you guys think this will hatch into? Leave your guesses in the comments down below. I feel that Bugsy was more of a threat than he is in the base game. Rollout did do a good enough job, however his Whirlipede has Protect and was able to block it. On top of that, his Pokemon knows Struggle Bug, which did decent damage for this point in the game. Thankfully, I was able to build up enough rollouts by the time I took Whirlipede out in order to one-shot Vivion. That thing could have been very dangerous. After that, I decided that I should hatch my egg before taking on the rival, and it turned out to be... Azorua! This is fantastic, and a much better outcome than the original Togepi you get. Also, I named it Hunter. Any ideas on what the naming scheme is yet? Rival time. Fortescue took out his Sand Isle in a single hit, and Hunter was able to two-shot his Hone Edge and his Breakson with a couple of faint attacks. This little guy is going to be extra useful when the rival's Breakson becomes a Psychic type later. At the top of Goldenrod City, we receive Kenya the Bird Pokemon. However, instead of it being a Spearow, we now get a Rufflet. This is also fantastic, as now we're going to get a Braviary. That is one of my favourite bird Pokemon. Plus, the game treats this as a traded Pokemon, and thus it gains one and a half times experience, so it's gonna level up a lot faster. Now I was planning on using Whitney's original rollout strategy against her, but her first Pokemon Chinchino put a stop to that straight away with a tract. Fortunately, Fortescue never actually missed any of his turns. Sadly however, he wasn't able to stand up to her fair fruit, which ended up being faster than my whole team, and even made both Fortescue and Kenya flinch with headbutts. Hunter was able to hang on and finish it off though. I'm just grateful that it didn't have milk drink and couldn't use a tract on us. After that I visited Bill to get the gift Pokemon that he bestows to you. Instead of an Eevee, he gives you a freaking Meloetta. Holy shit, we just got a legendary as a gift. I decided to name her Jill. How many names have you guessed so far? Now we've got to fight the rival in the Burn Tower. His Crocorock could have been a problem when he confused Fortescue with Swagger but we pulled through and took him out. Hunter came in and dealt with his next two members easily enough. After that, Fortescue took down Breakson with a couple of rollouts. I was surprised though to see just how much damage Fire Spin did. Good thing we're not dealing with Gen 1 mechanics. Thanks to this hack, Morty actually has a very team in this game. Hunter took down his first team member without taking any damage, but got pretty hurt and seeded by his second Pokemon. So I switched into Fortescue in order to deal with Cofagrigus, which looks both terrifying and awesome by the way. We got it down to low health, but missed one too many turns due to him using Double Team. Hunter was able to finish it off though, and Kenya easily dealt with his Trevenant. 
GG Morty. Chuck's fighting gym is up next. Kenya was easily able to beat down his Pangoro without taking a single hit, but his Honshiko ended up nailing me with Dynamic Punch. Twice in a row! That move only has 50 accuracy. That is insane! Thankfully, Jill was able to take him down without getting hit. After that, I spoke to the guy that usually gives you a shako as a gift. This time, it turns out to be a clink named Gygear, or Gigear, I honestly don't know. Nice to have the defensive benefits of a steel type. Next morning, I remember that Pokemon Crystal has the odd egg for you to obtain from the daycare man. So I went and picked it up. What will hatch from this? We'll have to wait and see. Jasmine's Steel Gym is next, so I made sure to put Fire Punch on Jill. Since this is Gen 2, all fire moves are special, which means they use her incredible base 128 special attack. Thanks to that, I managed to two-shot each of her Pokemon. If I didn't get that burn on her Kalefki, or if her Aegislash hadn't missed its attack, Jill would have gone down. But I'm sure Hunter could have finished it off. Price was actually more challenging than in the base game. I led with Guy Gear and took down his Vanillax easily, but his bear tick came in and nailed me with swagger. I then had the worst confusion luck as I hit myself three times in a row, and that allowed him to finish me off. Thankfully, Jill was able to come in and beat him and the following Avalug with only a couple of fire punches. I was in the middle of doing the radio tower mission when the egg hatched into a tep egg. Awesome to have a fire type. I named this little orange thing, Crash. You've got to be able to guess the naming scheme by now. The rival in the underground is next, and this one was pretty tricky. Hunter has evolved at this point, and easily dealt with his Dublate and Heliolisk, but his Crocorock hit Fortescue with Swagger, and the Confusion Gods decided that they hated me, since I couldn't shake it off in time before getting taken out. Kenya was able to finish him off, while got overpowered by his Dredagon, when he used Quick Attack. From there, Jill had to carry the rest of the battle on her shoulders, which wasn't too hard for her in all honesty. Hashtag Jill is Queen. Last of the gyms is Claire's Dragon Gym. I equipped Nevermelt Ice on Jill as a held item and went to town with Ice Punch. This proved to be the best strategy, but I am curious as to how this fight would have gone if I didn't have her on my team. Claire's Pokemon are all a higher level than me, and surely have better stats than most of my team. Oh well, maybe I'll come back to this run with the Monotype run and find out. After defeating Claire, I made sure to answer the Dragon Master's questions correctly. Normally this would net you a Dratini with extreme speed. This does do the same, except now you get a Dino. I name it, okay if it wasn't obvious before, the naming scheme should be clear to anyone by this point. After that, Professor Um calls me to his lab to give me a Froakie. This could be really useful. I am going to have to make some hard decisions on who should be on the team though. Considering that I already have two Dark Types on this team, I might have to forego using the Ninja Frog. One last rival fight before the League, and this one took a couple of tries, since he had great critical hit luck. This was a battle that went back and forth. Every time he sent out a new Pokemon, I had to switch out my current team member, just to get the optimal matchup. But even so, he always had the level lead on me. Jill, Hunter and Fortescue were all I needed for this battle, but he still ended up hitting each one really hard before he went down. Considering how close this was, I am definitely not ready for the league yet. So, here is what I decided to go with for the final team. Overall, I'm really satisfied with how this team has turned out. I also made sure to get everyone up to level 45, since I figured that would be a good level for our first attempt. Oh by the way, Rufflet evolves at level 40 in this game, as does Dino, unlike their versions in the base games, just in case you were wondering. Now then, let's go! Will is our first opponent, but in this game he specialises in fairy types. He starts with Dedene, who Crash easily took out with an earthquake, but his Aromatis tanked a flamethrower and nailed me with a psychic. I sent out Kenya to overpower him, and he ended up winning me the battle. He managed to survive each attack that Will landed, and nailed each of his Pokemon with a hard hitting move, surviving the battle with less than 5 HP. This burb was a real trooper, and definitely lives up to its nickname as the Soldier of the Sky. Koga is second, and he still uses poison types. Despite having a varied and solid team, we ended up getting a flawless victory against him, as we didn't take any damage at all, not even after he poisoned us, since poison doesn't affect you on the turn you KO another Pokemon in Gen 2. Easy battle. Fighting Trainer Bruno is up third, but he was ridiculously easy. Jill demolished his entire team with Psychic, and even leveled up to learn Nasty Plot. I've got a feeling that this will be a massive boon when used in conjunction with Dazzling Gleam against the next two challenges. Dark Trainer Karen is fourth, and she proved my prediction correct. One Nasty Plot, 
followed by one Dazzling Gleam for each of her Pokemon. Jill is making this more of a breeze than a challenge. Okay, I take that back, because Lance seems to have predicted my strategy. I set up my nasty block, but he paralysed me immediately with Glare, making Jill slower than the rest of his team. She was able to take out his first two Pokemon, but inevitably got taken out herself not long after. Fortunately, Spyro and Crash were able to come in and clean things up. Spyro did go down, but Crash was able to carry the rest of the battle on his shoulders. We thankfully got a couple of crits right at the end too, which definitely helped. Well that means the run is complete, but as you know, Kanto is the post game for this generation, and that means we've got to battle our way through all of the gym leaders. Normally I'd skip right to blue, since the others are really easy, so that's probably what I'm going to do here, unless there ends up being another one that's difficult. Either way, we'll be right back. Yeah, we're just going to skip straight to blue. It started off alright as Jill was able to set up against his Anfezen, but he managed to land a swagger, and because of that, the Confusion Gods once again decided that they hated me when Bluke Zoroark came out, so I lost my best team member. Crash was able to take him out with a priority mock punch thankfully, and Fortescue dealt with Caracosta easily enough. But then I had a complete brain fart when he sent out Whimsicott, and completely forgot its typing. As such, I lost Fortescue after Crash went down to a hurricane. Fortunately, Kenya was able to drill it into submission. Hunter was then able to come in and beat down both his Kling Clang and Darmanitan. Blue did try to storm me out towards the end with some potions, and did massive damage with submission, but overall, we pulled through. Well, if Blue was that hard, then I know we are not ready for Red in the slightest. I don't even know what his new team is in this game, but if he's still at the same level that he is in the base game, then we are definitely going to have to level up. Ok, so on paper, Red's team in this game is far stronger than the base game. He has all three universe starters, and all three of the legendary dragons. That's Zekrom, Reshiram, and Kyurem. I took my shot at level 65. He led with Superia, who set up a growth as I set up two nasty plots with Jill. Thankfully, the game cut me a break, and the built-in chance for status afflictions to miss kicked in, and his glares failed. From there, I took down his Superia and Samurott with a single psychic each. I went for Dazzling Gleam against Reshiram thinking that it would be super effective forgetting that it was part fire type. We thankfully survived its attack and finished it off. From there, the rest of his team was a one shot sweep. Whew. I know that this battle came across as really easy, but if it wasn't for Meloetta, I would have definitely had a harder time with Red. I gotta say, that was a really fun run. It's definitely better than the original game in some places, and does a great job in terms of both challenge and variety. If you guys want to check this out for yourselves, I've left a link to it in the description. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy and want to see more content in the future, be sure to like, subscribe and share this video. Feel free to leave any suggestions for future challenges in the comment section down below. And until next time, thank you very much for watching and have an awesome day.